Hello and welcome to a little redstone tutorial on multi-button door opening or something. Call it whatever you want. Basically, you can have as many buttons as you want that when all together are pressed cause a door to open. We are using this functionality for an obstacle course that we have where basically you go to different areas in the obstacle course and at the end is a button you hit the button and you have that state saved that you beat that area when you hit all of the buttons by beating all of the areas a special door opens that leads to a prize which is lava pouring on your face not really so uh... let me show you here's buttons press the button look it turns on press another one press another one Hey, they all got turned off. Wow, cool. Now if I go back here to the door, look, it's open. Yay! And it closes itself. If the server would load. There we go. Wow, cool. Okay, how does this work? And actually, before we go into that, why am I using buttons rather than just a lever like this? My server is super laggy right now. The reason for not using a lever is because there's no way for me to remotely say I want this lever to now be off. It stays on. And also, buttons look cooler because you could do something like maybe put a cool redstone torch on top to show that you've hit the button or something like that. So, the way that you make this work is by adding a feedback loop into here and this feedback loop is kind of like storing uh, information so when I hit this button I then store that it has been ever hit so let's have a look see oh look at that now this stays on even though it's a button as you probably know normal behavior for a button is to only be on for a moment before it turns itself off in this case it remains powered permanently the reason for this is this loop here, as I mentioned, where it goes around and powers itself. This requires a redstone repeater in the middle. And now that this is powered, it stays on. Uh, this basically only works if you have a full loop going. So the reason for this piston here with this block on it is so that it can eventually turn itself off, as you saw. The piston coming out will simulate me destroying this redstone wire here. Boop, it turns itself off. Now, it won't turn back on until someone gives it power again. So, by hitting all three of these buttons, which all have the exact same functionality here, I will have the charge stored in all three areas. Now you can see here, this is a simple AND condition with some redstone torches. Uh, you can do this in all sorts of different ways. This is the simplest. Basically, this redstone torch is on right now because this power that's going to the torch is off. Redstone torches are the opposite state of what goes into them. So, it, when these two torches are connected to this wire here, that means when either torch is on, this wire will be activated, which means that this torch, because it's opposite case, will be off. So in order for this torch to be on, this wire needs to be off, which means both of these need to be off, which means both of these wi wires need to be on. So let's have a look-see at that. Button 1 turns on, button 2 turns on. Both of these are off, this wire is off, this torch is on. Pretty simple. Now this wire down here goes over to another AND, and that's because I have three different blocks. So this wire that comes from the third button is off because I didn't hit the button which means this torch is on which means this torch is off this torch here is off because these two caused this to be on came over here pretty clear so in order to cause this one to be on I would need to hit the third button but before I do that let me show you where these wires go so when this goes on it causes this to be activated do 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 which as you can see in the end will connect to all three of my pistons here which will cut all of those circuits which turns everything off the reason I want to do that is because I want a final condition to happen 
when the player has hit all buttons and then it resets itself so someone else can beat the dungeon later. The reason for this little uh, repeater right here is just to extend charge because this is too far away. Redstone can only go 15 blocks. So, the other side of this is this wire going over here to this other little feedback loop that stores that it has ever been turned on. The reason for that is to open these pistons here, which are blocking this entryway. This feedback wire goes over to this redstone torch, and that causes these two pistons to open. The reason this torch is here is just to flip the charge to the opposite, so that when this is off, the pistons are on and retracted, or uh, sticking out. <laughs> I can't think of the opposite word right now. But when this is on, this turns off, which causes them to suck back in and lets you walk through. So let me go ahead and hit the third button, and you can see that. Third button, go. All right. That caused both of those AND cases to be true, which caused these to retract, which closed off these circuits and turned them all off. So this is all off now, as you can see. But because this ever had a charge, it came through, and now it's stored here. The reason for this little repeater right here is because repeaters only allow one-way charge. I don't want this charge to go all the way back into this system and keep the system on. So if you have a look right now, if I put a wire there, that actually keeps everything on, which, if the power source were not so far away, would be causing all three of these pistons to stay on. This one, you can see, is close enough that the piston's on right now, which we don't want. So, that is the reason for this one-way repeater. Now I can have this power on without affecting this wire over here. So, I now have this door open because this is on, which powers this. And what do I want to have happen? I want this power to turn itself off after walking through the door. So, there's a simple pressure plate right here, which links up with a wire. It just comes around and hits this piston, which causes it to turn on. And, boom, there you go. This will be turned off. So let's have a look-see. Voila. Off. And I can go back around and look to see that the dungeon door is now closed. Hooray! So this design is really simple, even though it looks pretty complicated, and you can make as many buttons as you want. We have five right now and we're going to probably be adding more obstacle courses so we'll add more buttons. You just need more ands to join the different wires into one eventual wire. I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, we are doing all kinds of fun redstone things with pistons and stuff. Uh, lots of tests as you can see in the distance here that we used for our dungeons. Um, and uh, maybe look forward to having some tutorials of those later if you like this one. If you did, just leave a comment and we'll uh, look into putting some more here. And uh, with that, I will activate the Happy Peeing Statue. Ho, 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 ho. By the way, before I go, the render distance is so short here because the server is a little slow and uh, the distance is really limited so that we can have a lot of people on here. All right, that's it. Thank you.